Every morning, 200 million Americans drink coffee without knowing a secret the industry rarely discusses. Some beans carry invisible toxins, mold compounds that form during processing, and survive roasting intact. The difference between safe coffee and contaminated coffee isn't the brand you buy or the price you pay. It's a 72-hour window that closes thousands of miles from your kitchen. Most people have this completely backwards. The story starts with a mystery that took decades to solve. In the 1960s, European health officials noticed something strange. Workers in coffee warehouses were getting sick at higher rates than the general population. Respiratory problems, liver issues, scientists suspected mold, warehouses were humid, beans sat for months, but couldn't prove it. Then in 1988, researchers in Sweden discovered ochratoxin A in roasted coffee beans. Not raw beans, roasted beans ready to drink. The toxin had survived temperatures that should have destroyed it. Suddenly, the warehouse workers' illnesses made sense. But the bigger question remained, where was contamination actually happening? The answer would take another decade to find, and it started not in laboratories, but on farms in the tropics. Coffee doesn't grow as a bean. It grows as a bright red cherry, with two seeds nestled in sweet, sticky pulp. For centuries, farmers processed these cherries the same way. Pick the fruit, spread it on concrete patios, let sun dry it for weeks. Simple, cheap. What nobody understood was the biology happening inside those drying piles. In 1997, researchers finally traced the source. They tested cherries at harvest, clean, after one day drying, still clean. But after four days in piles three inches deep, okra toxin levels spiked dramatically. The bottom cherries weren't getting airflow. Moisture trapped in pulp created perfect fungal conditions. 2,000 years of coffee processing. Nobody knew the danger was hiding in the drying piles. The discovery should have solved the problem. It didn't. Even farms doing everything right sometimes shipped contaminated beans. Same cherries, same careful processing, completely different results. Contamination was appearing after beans left the farm. Warehouses became the next suspect. In tropical climates without air conditioning, storage buildings hit 32 degrees by afternoon. Humidity climbed to 80% at night. Beans absorb moisture like a sponge. Content that left processing at 11% crept back to 14 during storage. Dormant spores reactivated. Then shipping, steel containers crossing oceans for three weeks. Temperature swings creating condensation inside. Farmers were blamed for problems they didn't cause, but one variable overrides everything else. So if processing, storage, and shipping all matter, why do some regions produce clean coffee year after year, while others constantly struggle? The answer is above your head, literally. Altitude. Coffee above 1,400 meters faces different biology. Aspergillus, the mold-producing aflatoxin, reproduces between 28 and 35 degrees. At 1,400 meters, Nights drop to 12. Fungal growth slows 70%. At 1,800 meters, nights hit 8 degrees. Aspergillus stops reproducing. The danger window stretches to 7 days. Lower pressure means faster evaporation. Beans lose moisture 20% faster. High-altitude beans aren't just better tasting. They're biologically safer. Heat transforms contamination chemistry in unexpected ways. During roasting, beans reach 195 to 230 degrees Celsius. Aflatoxins break down at 180 degrees. Light roasts destroy 15 to 25 percent. Medium roasts eliminate 40 to 50 percent. 
Dark roasts destroy 60 to 70 percent, but high heat triggers another reaction. Above 120 degrees, sugars react with amino acids, creating flavor, but also acrylamide, a probable carcinogen. Light roasts produce 150 micrograms per kilogram. Dark roasts produce 450. Darker roasting destroys original toxins but creates new compounds. No roast level eliminates all concerns. Starting with clean beans matters more than roasting technique. When you see laboratory tested on coffee, that claim can mean almost anything. Some companies test every batch. Any batch exceeding 5 micrograms, okra toxin gets rejected entirely. This costs $15 per test. Others test periodically, one batch monthly. Clean results applied to everything shipped that month. Batch 3 tests clean. Batches 1 through 5 ship as tested without ever seeing a laboratory. Still others rely on origin certifications. Brazil requires actual testing for export. Colombia accepts farmer self-reporting. Same certified stamp, completely different verification behind it. Tested for quality tells you nothing about contamination. Every batch tested for okra toxin tells you everything. 50 years of research. Thousands of contaminated shipments traced to their sources. The pattern is now clear. Speed after harvest. 48 hours of careful drying versus weeks fermenting in piles. Altitude, 1,800 meters with cold nights versus 400 meters in tropical heat. Storage, climate-controlled warehouses versus humid rooms. Testing, every batch analyzed versus paperwork from countries with no testing infrastructure. No single factor guarantees safety. But farmers who invested in faster processing, higher altitude plots, and proper storage solved problems plaguing the industry for generations. The contamination was never random. It was infrastructure. Next time you buy coffee, you know what questions matter. Altitude above 1400 meters means lower mold pressure from temperature alone. Specific testing claims, every batch tested versus tested for quality, mean actual laboratory verification. Your morning cup traveled 4,000 miles through dozens of hands before reaching you. At every step, someone either protected those beans or didn't. The countdown started the moment the cherry was picked. Which journey did your beans take?